Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series in Cisco IS 1.2. You can find a complete list of our IS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. We could have looked into the whole concept of sponsor and guest access in detail back in the IS 1.1 videos. Unfortunately, nothing has really changed in IS 1.2. Although we also touched on basic login portal customization by changing background color and logo, we haven't really looked into a full-blown HTML customization. So in this video, we are going to build our guest login portal from scratch with full customization. So I would assume that you have some knowledge of HTML coding and CSS styling. But before we can get to that, we first have to set up our guest authentication on ICE. So the first half of the video will be all about that. And we will give into the guest portal customization in the second half of the video. For a lab topology, we have a Cisco ICE 1.2 at the IP of .102 on VLAN 32. And at the same VLAN, we have our Windows 2008 domain controller at the IP of .40. And we also have our wireless LAN controller running version 7.5 at the IP of .104. Our access point down here is connected to VLAN 64, getting IP from DSCP. And this is the same VLAN we're going to be dropping our wireless user into. And for our test machine, we have a non-domain computer running Windows 7. It's called Win7 Non-Corp that we'll be using to test our guest login. For our sponsor, we're going to use a AD user called Admin1 that's part of an AD group called Guest Sponsor. And we're going to use this user to generate our guest account through the sponsor portal page. Okay, so we're going to start off by showing you the AD user that we have created already and we're going to use for our sponsor. And this is under the our domain controller. So we'll go to the user and computers and the user is called admin1. Right here, admin1. And let's look at the group membership. So this particular user is a member of a group called guest sponsor. All right, so on the ICE, we have to make sure that we have the corresponding user group added as part of the AD integration. So if you go under external identity source, active directory, and look at the group, and let's verify that we in fact have a guest sponsor AD group added already. Before we get into the ICE configuration, I want to show you the configuration on our wireless LAN controller or this is ID that we're going to use for our guests. So let me lock into a wireless LAN controller. Now under the WLAN, we have our SSID called alim guests and this is ID number four. And the way we have it set up right now is connected to, or this SSID is connected to VLAN 64. As we mentioned, that's where we're going to drop the user into. And for our layer two, we want to keep the SSID open so anybody can pretty much connect to the SSID. But we want to make sure that we have this MAC filtering box checked. So any connection that's coming in, the controller will be able to pass it on as a radius request to ICE. And this is going to be considered a wireless map or MAC authentication bypass. And we also need to make sure that we have ICE defined as a AAA server and then chosen under the authentication server as well as the accounting servers. Okay, now under the advanced tab, and this is a standard setup for the SSID when you deal with ICE. And that is to have the allow AAA override enable as well as have the NAC state set to radius NAC. Okay, if you're wondering where we define the radius server, that's going to be under security. AAA radius authentication, this is where we add our ICE server 32.102. And there's for authentication, and there's also another option for accounting. So we need to do both. All right, so that's the configuration of wise line controller. Now let's jump back to our eyes and start configuring our guest access. By starting at administration and then web portal management and then settings. Here we'll go from top to bottom, starting with general and portal theme. This is where we do the basic customization, such as changing logos or text color, font colors, or background color, which we've looked into already back in the ICE 1.1 guest and sponsor video. So we're going to skip through this. The next option is to change the port, and this is where you change the ports on the couple of the portals that hosted on ICE. An example of this would be my device portal or even the sponsor portal right here. And by default, all of these TCP ports are 8443. Always except this one is going to be 8444. All right, so keep moving down. We here have a sponsor for authentication source. Since we say that our sponsor account is going to be living on the 80, so we need to make sure that we select the appropriate authentication servers. We already have a identity sequence created that includes Active Directory in there. So we're just going to use that. So it's going to look first at the Active Directory and then we'll look at the local user database on ICE. So this should be sufficient. 
Okay, next we come down here to guess and we, there we have a details policy. And this is where you define what parameters you require a user to enter. And this is for a self-service when they're trying to configure. Actually, this is also for the sponsor portal itself. You're trying to create a guest account. So by default, all of these fields are optional, but let's go ahead and make the email mandatory field. So that way, when a guest account is generated, the email at least has to be specified. Okay, next we're gonna create our guest portal. Instead of using the default, we're gonna create one ourselves. And let's call that right here, multi portal configuration, and then click add. We're just gonna call it LM guest default. And here, this is where you choose where the what, what kind of portal types you want to use, whether it's default portal, you want to do the custom default portal, which we'll look at later in the second half of this lab. For now, we're going to use the default portal, which is the portal page that's provided by Cisco by default. For operation, we can select how often you want the acceptable use policies to show up. Then you have the options of not use, first lock-in or every lock-in. So let's pick every lock-in. And then there's a couple options follows that we can choose as far as how you want your guest portal to behave. If you are dealing with onboarding for the BYOD, and then you will want to have the self-provisioning flow checked. And usually this is used as part of the wired onboarding or the dual SSID onboarding. So let's go ahead and check that, although we're not dealing with those in this lab. Let's go ahead and uncheck mobile portal at this point. We can force the guest users to change the password or allow, actually this one is for allowing the guest user to change the password on their own. But this one right here is to require the guest users to change the password at the time of their first login. Okay, and let's also enable the self servant as well. Everything else will keep it disabled. This one right here for download posture client, this is when you're dealing with the web agent for the posture assessment. Okay, everything else we're pretty much gonna leave at default. And we'll click submit. Moving down to the password policy, let's keep it simple. This is how you define the complexity of the guest password. Let's change that down to one character. Don't really care about the number, a special character, so we can change that to both zero. And we'll click save. Again, this is just for testing purposes. In production, you definitely want to make sure that the guest password is complex enough. Next is the time profile. This is where you define the duration of the guest accounts. And by default, these are the three options. We're going to create one for one day. So for the name, let's call it something LM underscore one day. Right, we used to use a specific time zone and the account type. We want the account to start ticking from the first login and the duration we said we want it to be one day. Okay, we do not want to force any kind of time login restrictions. So we can just click submit. Those are pretty much all the general settings that we want to do at this point for our guests. Next, we're going to move on to a sponsor configuration, starting with by creating a sponsor groups. And this is to define what kind of permissions or privilege a sponsor will have once they lock in. So let's go ahead and add, and we're going to call this one LM underscore sponsor underscore all. So we're going to give them full access. As you can see here, these are some of the options that you can adjust. And we're going to leave those at default. Now for our guest role, we already have a identity group guest. We want to add one more. And let's say we want to also choose activated guests. Okay, now for time profile, by default, it's already included in eight hours. So let's say we want all of these profiles to be available for this particular sponsor group. And that includes our one day time profile we just created. Okay, so any sponsor that's been assigned to this particular group will have access as specified under the group. Next, we're moving over to the sponsor group policy, and this is to define our rules to assign a user to a particular sponsor group. So we're not going to use the default, although that you can. I'm just going to go ahead and disable all of these and create one ourselves. So we're going to do insert new policy above, and we're going to call this one lm dash sponsor for condition we want to make sure that a user or ad user is part of the guest sponsor ad group so i'm going to create a new condition and this is going to be based on ad1 external group and then we need to select guest sponsor for the condition and when that is true we want to assign them to a lm sponsor all sponsor group that we just created okay so 
I might be flying through all these configuration a little bit here, and that's because we already have a quite extensive videos on this back in ICE 1.1. So if you guys want more details on guests and sponsor, make sure you check out those videos. All right, so those are for sponsor, login, or configuration. Next, we're going to move on to creating authentication authorization policies for our guest access. Starting off by creating a authorization profile. So what to assign to our guests when they're trying to, when they first connect and they're trying to lock in before we jump into the policies since policy is always going to reference back to the authorization profile that we will need eventually. So it makes sense to create that first. So the first profile that we're going to be creating this is for when the guest user first connects to the SSID. So we're going to redirect them to our guest portal. And this is the profile that's going to be returned to the user at that point. So we're going to call this one WLAN CWA for central web auth. And then we're going to select our web redirection. And we're going to use a centralized web auth for the redirect ACL. This is the ACL defined on the wireless line controller since we're dealing with wireless. And all the user needs access to at this point is a web portal on ICE. So we're going to use our access list called LM ICE only. Let me show you the access control list with the matching name LM ICE only. Basically, all this is particular ACL is allowing is the permit all to our ICE IP address 32.102 and nothing else. All right for redirect, we're not going to use the default portal, but instead we're going to pick the one that we create ourselves called LM Guest Default. I can see right here the corresponding AV pair. You can see the URL redirect as well as the redirect ACL. All right, so these are the actual radius attributes that will be returned to the wireless line controller. So I'll click Submit. We have to create one more once the user, guest user, has successfully lock in. Let's say we want to give them internet only access. So we need to create another authorization profile. And this one's going to be called WLAN internet only. And this is just going to be a simple airspace ACL. That's called uh, LM internet only. And again, to show you the current spending ACL on the wireless line controller. Right here, LM dash internet only. And it's in addition to allowing access to ICE, we are denying pretty much everything to RFC 1918, which is the private IP space, and then we we'll permit everything else, which is the internet. Okay, so this is how the ACL for internet only is built. Scroll down and we'll click submit. Now that we have our authorization profile, we can go under policy sets and start looking at our authentication authorization policies. And as you can see, we already have a policy set called WLAN created from a previous lab. And all it does is trying to match the radius request coming in that has an attribute for wireless, which is the NAS port type 80211, as well as making sure that the request is coming from a wireless LAN controller. So you can see there's a device type WLC that we defined when we created the network device group or network device. Now under that, for our authentication, we are currently using a default rule that's going to be pretty much matching everything and it's just going to go through this particular sequence to look for a user. And currently if the user does not exist, as it shows right here, if user not found, then we're going to choose to continue. And this is how the wireless map or map overall uh, actually works. So. Most of the time, the request that comes in, we'll not be able to locate them in the database. We're just going to continue. And for a wireless map or a map, we have to make sure that the host lookup, so let me show you what I'm talking about under the policy elements. Make sure we need to allow the host lookup because that's what the map uses for authentication allow protocol. And since we're using the default network access, you can see right here, the host lookup is checked or chosen. But if you happen to use your own definition of the allowed protocols, then make sure that for the map, you have the host lookup defined. Okay, so authentication is good. Next, let's look at the authorization policies. And some of these we had created back in the previous video with the MDM. But with the map, when the user first come in, it would not match any of these rules and just going to fall all the way to the bottom. So we need to have some a kind of a catch all rule that will redirect user to a login portal page. So we're going to create one rule and let's call this one LM WLAN 
CWA. Okay, and for matching condition, we know that they're going to be coming in through a wireless map. So we're going to select a, an existing compound condition from a library. This is CAM by default with ICE. And we're going to choose wireless map. And then we know exactly which SSID they're supposed to be coming from. As we just looked at earlier, that's going to be the BLAN ID 4. So we want to make sure that we be a little specific about that as well. So I'm going to create another attribute. And that's going to condition based on the, the BLAN ID. So if you choose the airspace and the BLAN ID, and that's going to be ID number four. Okay, when those conditions are met, we want to redirect user to a portal. And this is where we choose our authorization profile we created earlier. And that's called the BLAN CWA. Done. Now, once the user has successfully logged in, we're going to have to create another rule that will match that and allow them internet access. So let me duplicate above and call this one the VLAN guests. So for those guests, they're going to be part of the user identity group, whether it's guest right here. So we select guest or an unactivated guest. So we're going to select both. As you can see, logical all right there. Now for a condition, all of these still going to be uh, true because they're still coming in as wireless map, still the same SSID. And then we can actually add one more condition just to be absolutely sure. This is guest login and this is under network access use case. And we'll select the guest flow. All right. So when those conditions are met, again, we want to provide internet only access. And this is the second authorization profile that we created to view that internet only. Okay, so done. So these are the only two authorization rules that we need to make the guest access happen. Click Save. Now, before we can actually test our configuration, we need an account to test with. So we need to generate a guest account. And this is going to be on the sponsor portal page. And to lock in, we say we have a sponsor a user, AD user called admin1, and then password Cisco that we can use for our sponsor to, to create a guest account. And right here, successfully log in. And the first option that you see right here is to create an account. You can also import an accounts. And this is when you do a bulk import, you can come up with a list of accounts in advance and then do an import if you like, or you can also generate a random account. You can see right here, when you choose to import, it asks you for a file. And you can see you can download a template as well. Okay, but for us, we just want to generate a single account. So we click create account. You can see since we specify that the email address is the only parameters that it's mandatory, you can see a little asterisk there. So let's create or give it an email address called guests at lm.com. So keep it short. And then guest role, I want it to be guest. And for the duration, let's use the lm one day that we create ourselves, and then click submit. Give it a second. Looks like we might have missed a setting that said use the email for the username. So let me go back and check on that real quick. So that should be under settings and guest and username policy right there. We did not select this. So let's go ahead and do that right now. That's why the username came back with some random characters. But now that we specify we want to use the email address, we can go back here and let's try to generate another guest account, but let's make sure we delete that since the email address might conflict. So let's do that one more time. Create account. Email address is, we say it's going to be guest at lm.com. Again, one day, submit. And there you go. We got our email address as a username and the password is lowercase h. So now that we have our guest account, let me bring up our test machine for Windows 7. And first, let's go ahead and associate to a lm guest SSID. You can see now it's connected. We can bring up our web browser. Just to force the redirection, we're just going to type cisco.com. And there you go. We got redirected to the guest portal page. For the username is guest.lm.com. Just make a quick note here. Since we enabled the self service option, we can also click here and generate our own account without relying on the sponsor because we make that an option to the user right here, although we're not going to do that. And just to make a note that we also allow the user to change their own password so they can do it right here as well. So let's go ahead and lock in with guest at lm.com. Password was lowercase h. 
sign on. This is our acceptable use policy. We'll click accept. And since we specify the user must change their password at the first login, this is why we're being asked to change our password. So our password is lowercase h. New password, just give Cisco, Cisco. And then we can go ahead and change the password. And you can see that we are now signed on successfully. And we can pretty much type the URL that we tried earlier. Cisco.com, you can see that we now have internet access. Okay, so let's go back to ICE and review the log and see what happened. Okay, we'll go show live authentication. And you can see right there, this is probably the first time that the, right there, Windows 7 that came in and connect. And you can see this is a map because the identity is this MAC address. So just based on that, you can tell this is the map type radius request. And since the, obviously MAC address is not known to ICE or ICE cannot locate that MAC address, it fell down all the way through our authorization rule and got caught by the one that we created for the URL redirect. And that's why the WLAN CWA got returned. And we can look into that in more detail. Just drill down into that. You see policy set is the WLAN. This is a Windows 7, obviously. User type is host, and authentication method is lookup or host lookup, as I mentioned previously, that you need those to be allowed for your authentication protocol. Authentication method is map or wireless map to be specific, and then the authorization profile to be land CWA got returned to the user. Okay, this is the redirect URL in full, as well as the redirect ACL. Okay, so once the guest user has logged in using the guest at lm.com account, you can see then it got pushed down or assigned to a WLAN internet only. Now you can see this empty line right here is a COA that forced the guest to come right back, and that's why it gets reevaluated and then allowed to internet only. Okay, so now that we have the basic guest access infrastructure set up on ICE, we can now proceed with our guest portal customization.